Hello, so this was a requested video from one of my patrons. Harvey on Patreon requested, could I do a video specifically on foam heads? Um, like, you know, the mannequin type heads for gas masks, because do any of them damage the masks and what's best to display them on? Um, because he'd heard that styrofoam heads can damage masks. Now, I've heard that too, but I don't know how true it is. Now, what I have here is a polystyrene head. Um, it's got my MM1 Soviet tank crewman mask on it, plus the... Um, actual sort of tank crewman's helmet for it as you can see so that goes on there quite nice and that sits on top of my wardrobe in my bedroom because it looks quite sinister and cool um, I've got another MM1 on a plastic mannequin head where I've got a full mannequin in another room but that one unfortunately is one where the sunlight hits it every day so that mask is damaged but not due to the plastic of the mannequin it's due to the sunlight hitting it but you know I got them at a time when MM1s are quite cheap and I just thought they look cool to display so Regarding the video, so the two mannequin type heads I have, this one is polystyrene, and I think styrofoam and polystyrene aren't quite the same thing, are they? They have a slightly different chemical makeup, but regardless, this polystyrene one has caused absolutely no damage to this MM1 whatsoever. You can look on the sort of insides through the eyepieces or whatever. I won't take this all apart because it can cause the styrofoam or polystyrene to, you know, collapse a bit if you do that. But I've never seen it cause any damage to this particular mask, but that's not to say that every mask wouldn't be the case. So if we go over the type of mannequin heads you can get, as far as I'm aware, you can get polystyrene and styrofoam. Again, they're, I think they're slightly different things, but I don't know how much of an impact that would make on something being displayed on it. You can get plastic ones, and I assume various different types of plastics, and glass. Now, from what I've heard, they're the most expensive, but glass mannequin heads are the absolute best ones for displaying masks on, because not much reacts to glass. Um, whereas some of these sort of polystyrene and styrofoam heads can cause reactions, but as I said, the two Soviet masks I have on display on mannequin heads have not been damaged at all by them. Now, the mask I imagine certainly would get damaged by some sort of head if there was going to be a reaction is the actual um, Yugoslavian M1, because that's the one that has a habit of melting for a lot of people. Now, mine's not done that, but I keep it in a dark place in the bag, but you know, some people have had M1s melt for no reason whatsoever, so I assume if you had it on a styrofoam head, it would be even more likely to melt, I'm not sure. But, you know, um, I think you asked about the 4A1, didn't you, the Israeli mask? Now, I actually have um, no idea exactly what that's made out of. I assume it would be either butyl or latex. Um, either way, I can't really see that reacting. Butyl, I imagine, would barely react to anything because it's kind of like the premium rubber they use in gas masks now, or now, like, spin-offs of butyl. But the reason butyl was so good was because, you know, it's a lot less reactive than other rubbers, so it's less likely to be disintegrated or whatever, or eaten away at, like, various chemical weapons. Um, latex, I was saying the Soviet masks are latex, and I can't see, you know, any damage done to this one by this sort of polystyrene head, but as I said, this is polystyrene, not styrofoam. So, um... I don't see any problem there. Obviously, another thing to keep in mind is if you do have the heads on display, as I've already sort of covered, is don't have them near a bright sunlight window kind of thing. Because if UV rays are hitting the mask every day, that's not going to do any the rubber any good. I imagine maybe some of the people who have complained about storing masks, if they have stored them in a prominently displayed area, that's why they've had a problem. Because, you know, they have displayed the mask getting hit by UV radiation every day. And what a surprise, the mask, you know, kind of fades and everything. Even with this mask where it's not really in direct sunlight, you can see that the rubber is starting to, um, you know, look a bit off colour and everything now. Uh, not as bad as the one I've got in the other room. You can see the side where the sunlight hits that uh, looks much, much worse than the side where the sunlight doesn't hit. So, you know, as I said, um, there's definitely an impact of UV radiation on these masks. But... Getting back to your question, I think with a 4A1 you could probably display it on pretty much any kind of mannequin head whatsoever with no problems. I don't think the 4A1 is a very reactive rubber at all. I've not heard of people saying their 4A1s have melted or anything like that. Um, and as I said, I don't know how true all the stories are of styrofoam destroying masks is. Because, I've, like I said, I've heard those stories, but I've got a polystyrene head here. It's not done any damage to this mask. Um, like I said, some masks are definitely going to be more reactive than others. If I had very valuable old masks, I certainly wouldn't, certainly wouldn't risk it, you know, on anything other than the glass head. But as I said, another problem with putting them on a display head is you're kind of stretching the mask over the head a lot of the time, especially if you're doing it with something like a GP5. So over time, the longer you have it stretched on the mannequin head, 
uh, you know, the looser the mask is going to get. Now if it's a strap up mask you could probably fully undo the straps, put the mask on and then, you know, slightly tighten the straps and it will stay on fine. If that's the case then, you know, it's not really going to cause any problem whatsoever. However, if you're doing it with, um, you know, like, um, sort of masks, like I say, with GP5s where you have to stretch the rubber over, especially older, more valuable ones, um, like the VM37, VM40, yes, I imagine that could certainly damage the mask over time just by having a rubber stretched out. Now, in theory, if you're storing a mask totally correctly, you actually store them with their plastic inserts or, like, cardboard inserts. I don't know if you've seen this, but sometimes when you buy a mask that's actually never been issued before, it will come with like a plastic or a cardboard insert which is designed to keep the mask shape in the bag to prevent the mask being crushed in. Um, my M9 came with that, uh, my GSR came with that, uh, my, I think my GP7 or my PMK1 came with that, uh, and there might have been a couple of other masks I've had as well, oh my Swiss SM67 had one in as well, plastic insert. So, um, you know, in theory, keeping those in the mask is probably the best thing. But as I said, you don't really want to keep get expose the mask to the elements too much anyway. You want to keep it in a satchel where it's nice and protected. So, hopefully that's answered your question a bit more than I've done in the previous video on this subject. Like I said, I'm really not an expert on it, and I think a lot of this is speculation where people think certain types of heads eat at certain masks. Maybe there are certain rubbers if a mask's made from, you avoid certain materials, but I've never seen anything conclusive on this, so... Hopefully um, this has answered your question. A big thank you for the Patreon support as well. It does mean a lot to me. Um, and a similar question to any other patrons um, that support me. If you have a really good idea for a video or a question, I can certainly do a video on it. Um, you know, I know a lot of people ask me questions in the Discord when I'm about in there, but if you actually want to ask me a question, have me do a video on it, as long as it's something sensible and isn't, you know, stupidly like an illegal question, I'm very happy to have a go at answering it on camera, because maybe it'll help other people as well. And obviously a big thank you to your support as well. So, uh, again, thank you, Harvey. Um, big thumbs up for that. Interesting question. Um, and hopefully this video has actually been useful for you.